Dear Madam President, dear Madam, Mr. Commissioner and dear colleagues, when speaking about equal share of family responsibilities between women and men and ultimately to the goal of a more equal society in the context of promoting the best interests of the child in reconciliation policies, we have to remember that we are presenting the people here in this House and not the Council view. And recently, I have noticed that there have been too many pair reps turning around and lobbying MEPs, which I don't feel is acceptable according to our rules and principles of independently elected MEPs. It is argued that increasing maternity leave imposes higher costs on the private and public sector at a time of economic crisis, but this is just 0.01% from GDP, and we are talking about 2 billion. At the same time, I have compared the military budget of the countries mentioned, which budget actually has increased in one year by 3 billion and has not been questioned, neither in this House nor in their parliaments. However, in a time of growing economic uncertainty, and while we are facing demographic changes, it is vital to support flexible leave policies, which may help to reverse current demographic trends. We should take our joint commitment to ensure that women across Europe become part of the labour market that takes their life choice seriously through higher female labour market participation, greater value being accorded to childhood and the importance of balancing family and working life. In conclusion, I would strongly highlight that the European welfare system and measures as stipulated in this directive are a value, not a burden to the European market. Thank you very much.